So starting with the Supreme, we've got Getterbird, the 7-4 favourite, Kalashnikov 6-1, to Mengli Khan 12, Somerville Boy 12s, about 16-1 to one bar. Uh, look at Getterbird, Willie Mullins obviously has a great record in this race, um, Millen second, Mellon second, Duvan winning it, Vittor winning it. Mike, how do you think Getterbird stacks up compared to, compared to that company? I, th I think he's a better horse than, than Mellon was. I think he's a, good, a very good horse. I don't think he's in the elites of Duvan and, and to some extent Min, although he's, he's no Duvan, he's a very smart horse. But... Um, I, I, at the moment, I think he's priced on the, on the Ritchie and Mullins factor rather than what he's actually done on the course. He, he won well last time, but the time wasn't electric. But at the same time, he couldn't have done any more than he did. I, I mean, I, th I think he's... It, it looks a weak supreme. I don't think there's a star in there, so he's not going to have to be Duvan level to win the race, I don't think. But I, I think there's a few in there that could step up and I, I don't think it's going to be a formality by any sense of the name. Who are you eyeing up as being ones that he could come into? Well, my, my, to be fair, my main bet of the week was going to be claim and take and Fulgen until he flopped last time out. Uh, I, I think first time out, I think he was, he was 25 lengths faster from the four pole to the finish than the, the very good mayor's hurdle on the card at Newbury that day. And then at Ascot last time, uh, the, the time the, before his last runner, you know, he jumped like a champion hurdler, he travelled like a champion hurdler. I, I thought he was an absolute... You know, I thought he just had to turn up in the Supreme the way it was looking, but he went up to Musselburgh and, you know, things, they didn't go right. He didn't travel like he can do. He didn't even jump like he can do. Um, yet to really hear any reason of, of why he did flop that day, but he's still on course with the Supreme, they say. I mean, if he was back to his best, he's certainly the one to beat for me. Um, Kalashnikov sets a good standard I mean, yeah, I'd like to have seen him travel slightly better in the Betfair hurdle, but the way he saw it out certainly was, was taking. Um, I can't have Somerville Boy and Mangley calm myself. I, I just don't think Even though Somerville Boy beat, you know, has, has, a, has form over and has last run over Kalashnikov? I think so, yeah. I mean, his, his form at Cheltenham before then wouldn't be good enough to win a Supreme. And I, I just, the way that Kalashnikov travelled through the toll, it was clear he was hating that ground. Um, I think he just wants better ground. He's a very fast horse, Kalashnikov. I think he's talented. Yeah, I could, unless it was a real bog, which is highly unlikely, I, I can't see Kalashnikov finishing behind Somerville Boy with a, with a clear run, really. And uh, Andy, it's an interesting one. I know you're very keen on your, your speed figures, and I think yeah. that in, in kind of novice hurdle company, it's, it's always interesting because you, you know, you're trying to compare apples and pears, really, sometimes with the, with the Irish form and the English stuff. Yeah. Um, how do you see this, this panning out? It's funny that, because um, Mike was saying that he hadn't got a particularly good time for Get a Bird, and yet I, I did. <laughs> I got a very good time for Get a Bird when he won in Punchestown. Certainly on a par with Vator, uh, historically anyway, Min uh, and Duvan, virtually the same really. Um, this is the overall time, not sectionals. If you want to go into the realms of sectionals, well then it's a different ball game. The one thing I will say about Get a Bird, he's a relentless galloper, and he stays further. He almost, I think, gone back to two miles by default. I think they thought he was a two and a half mile horse. That was how they pa panned out his season. But he showed so much speed in the Moscow Flyer. I think they've had a change of heart. And particularly now Sam Crow's going down the other route. He's kind of opened up this division quite nicely. I don't think it's a particularly strong two mile division this year. I think certainly this side of this side of the RSC um, is, I wouldn't say substandard, but we haven't got any superstars, let's say. So I think he is a worthy favourite on what he's done. Um, he's, he's quite a big-boned horse. Um, he hits the ground quite hard. That would be my only reservation if they were to get good ground in the going description. But given all the, the snow and the, the forecast for next week, it's going to go a mile and we're going to get some rain. I think it will ride on the soft side. And that will definitely help him coming down the hill. He's almost like a, um, like a how can I use the analogy, like a Steve Cram rather than a, a Seb Co. <laughs> <laughs> he's a grinder. He does, he's not pretty to look at, yeah. but he does not gallop. Mm. Uh, and he's got so many similarities to Vator and Duvan are very similar types. Um, I haven't backed Get a Bird, even though I'm flagging him up as a worthy favourite, because I do think there are others in the race that deserve a little bit more respect than what the bookmakers have given them. Um, Paloma Blue is one that I put up on Odd a few weeks ago, Henry de Bromheads. Um, people will probably be scoffing at that, but... He was the only horse in that race in the Deloitte, which is the best two-mile Irish race um, coming into the festival, to give Sam Crow any kind of a race. And he was very, very keen early on. 
Only a really good horse like him could do what he did at Leopardstown. He was so free and fresh early on. Davy couldn't hold him. He made a couple of mistakes down the back, and yet he's still come on the bridle at the turning for home. Uh, I think he's a very good horse, Paloma Blue. Um, Interesting. Six, 16 to 1, Paloma Blue is best price pretty much across the board. Yeah, and if, you, if you're just using a horse as a guide, Impact Factor, who um, get a bird beat the time before, well... Paloma Blue dished out a similar beating to Impact Factor at Leopardstown on his previous run. I'm not saying he's going to win Paloma Blue, but I do think he'll be there or thereabouts because he's got a high cruising speed. He jumps well, and I think the big field on better ground, because I don't think he's been really liking the Irish heavy ground, will really suit him. Um, away from that, then, obviously, we'll have to respect um, Harry's horse if he runs, because yeah. we'll, um, we'll, we'll get on to him. Um, I thought it was a really good run behind um, Harry Fry's horse at Kempton. Musselburgh probably didn't suit him, I would have thought. Yeah, uh, Musselburgh, uh, I couldn't really say that. Um, you know, we were delighted with his run. He, he missed a couple of hurdles, especially the last, which cost him the race. You know, Sean Byrne got off him and said, if I jumped the last and landed and, and was running, I, I would have beaten him, you know, I would have won the race. So, um, so I, yeah, I mean, he at the end of the day, Simply, I mean, Kempton didn't go well at all, to be honest. He was he was too free, he didn't really settle. Uh, this is simply the bets, for those who are wondering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. simply the bets, obviously. Um, and he, he won his bumper nicely anyway in, in September. And, um, and then October and November didn't go great. Uh, he sort of filled out. He was, he's a big lump of a horse. Um, he went a bit weak on us. He had a little bit of ringworm at the beginning of November and I got held up to the end of November. Um, and he ran a, a, a great race there. It turned into a bit of a, a test against Lost in Translation and um, uh, and we've now figured out the way that we need to ride him which is the way we rode him at Musselburgh and um, uh, you know and obviously that's where the, all the improvement came from so um, you know obviously that was a, a great run um, with Clayman taking Forgan who um, was probably not his best um, but at, at the same time you know it, we were just happy to see our horse back on track and you know showing on the track what he does at home because at home he is a very very talented horse very good work horse um, I still think that he's going to be a much stronger horse next year and he's probably you know not ready to go and um, you know run a or win a supreme this season you know but the way he's ridden and, and he's very talented and if Sean Byrne gets the same tune out of him, which I'm sure he will, um, you know, he'll be ridden off the pace and, you know, if they get racing early and it's, if there's a bit of a collapsing pace, he might just, you know, fall into a place, you know. I think he'll run in the first half if, if, of the field. You know, we wouldn't run him if we didn't think that he was capable of doing that. So, um, you know, he might be a, a little each way squeak, you know, but I'm just not sure... Um, he's ready to go and win a race like this this year, but I think that he could win a race like this next year, you know, because, um, you know, he is a big lump of a horse, he's only five, and he will strength, strengthen up a, a hell of a lot for a for summer break, and he will be, a, um, you know, £10 better horse next year. As you mentioned, he would, you know, he'd be able to run in, in novice company again next year. If he's <laughs> well, he will, so, exactly, that's yeah. the plan, you know, he's going to run in the Supreme, and, you know, he, he, obviously if he gets beaten, he's still a novice for next season, so, you know, that will be it, you know two weeks out in the field and, uh, and then we'll campaign as a novice next season yeah so simply the bet is best price 40 to 1 that's with Betfair despite being as short as 25s elsewhere some of the other horses we mentioned I'm, I'm glad sorry that I'm very glad that um, that Andy's mentioned him because that's nice you know. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't courtesy because actually, actually a few people have actually and you know we were at a, um, I was at a preview evening last night and there was one or two that said you know these, you, you could easily back him each way off his last run and things so yeah it's 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 nice that we you know we're going with a, a horse that you know is capable of running you know into a frame perhaps in a supreme this year would be fantastic certainly not just making up the numbers um claimant uh claimant taken forgan as mike mentioned is 16 to 1 best price that's also with, with betfair um, and as I said, Getter Bird is 7 or 4 favourite with uh, 10 bet and Sport Pisa, uh, the ones who are sticking their neck out at 7 or 4, as short as 5 to 4 elsewhere. Nick, anything to add to that for the Supreme? <laughs> the boys have covered it very, very well. But um, as in previous years, you know, the Irish, the English form, how do you sort of judge it? But um, the Irish have, have come out on top, and I was hugely impressed at Leopardstown, the way Getterbird just come around the bend and draw clear. And um, although he's unproven on this better ground, um, you know, he, he's the most logical one watching visually that has been the most impressive. Um, I was mightily impressed by Kalashnikov, the way I was on a good 130 off of Harry Fry's in the Misterton, jumping two out, you know, where there was a gruelling race and I looked across and the way Jack come past me, 
you know, let's suggest he, he didn't go past like a 140 horse, you know, mm. he's probably a solid mm. yeah. 150, 155 horse. And yeah. um, I, I know Amy Murphy's in the paper saying it'd be better for better ground, but he seemed to relish that heavy ground at Newbury. And mm. so the ground conditions shouldn't be a problem to him. And um, he's certainly, from the English point of view, I think he stands above. And um, the Tollworth can always be a funny race. And I don't think you can take the form too literally, literally from yeah. Somerville, but boy, and, you know, ironic on Melodic Rendezvous, and he was never good enough for us, yeah. you know, a, um, for a supreme novice. So um, I, I was very impressed. But for hurdle form does have him does have solid form but um it's between those them two as the betting suggests but i suppose get a better has you know the right connections and it's hard to steer away from that interesting we went to go and see amy murphy last week in newmarket um so keep your eye out for for the videos there and and it was interesting going down to the gallops uh, the, you know with her and everyone at Newmarket asking her how Klashikov is doing, and she was saying that because you know not very often Newmarket has Cheltenham fancy, so the whole the whole town is basically taking him under their wing. So fingers crossed for Amy, fingers crossed for Harry too. Look out, there'll be a video about simply the bets coming out uh, that Oddschecker made as well when we went to go and see you too.